There was an instance where it became real. I was a trader on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, and then this crazy thing called the internet had become really, really popular. I wound up deciding to go get my MBA at Stanford, and while I was at Stanford, I did an internship at a relatively small company called Amazon.com. I grew up in Houston and I was always involved in entrepreneurial things. And so I really enjoyed, you know, lots of uh, organizations that were focused on entrepreneurship, you know, in high school. I did uh, pretty well. And fun fact, I was actually the mascot of my high school. I was Louis the Longhorn at one of the largest high schools in Texas, which is Dobie High School in Houston. I mowed grass like there was nobody's business. From the time that I was in junior high school, had a lawn mower, had an edger, you know, that's that's how I made money. And then I wound up being a sacker at a grocery store. That's what I did through high school. And I have zero bad memories of that. It's uh, it's all awesome because I was the person who was able to go to work and still do pretty well in school and you know have a little bit of money which was really nice in high school for sure. I wound up going to the University of Texas. I was originally in finance and after University of Texas, moved to New York City and worked on, on Wall Street. I was an investment banker at Merrill Lynch doing mergers and acquisitions. Then I was a trader on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And so that is definitely not a career path that most folks take. After that, I wound up working in the finance industry for a little bit longer, and then this crazy thing called the internet uh, had become really, really popular. And so I wound up deciding to go get my MBA at Stanford, moved out to the West Coast to California. And while I was at Stanford, I did an internship at a relatively small company called Amazon.com. Uh, and that really, really stoked my interest in e-commerce, e-commerce merchandising, marketing, etc. The Stanford community was absolutely fantastic. Of course, everyone in Silicon Valley is involved in e-commerce and tech in, in some way. So that really created a great springboard for me to stay in the tech industry. Although I was itching to come back to Austin, as lots of people are, and people are still, of course, moving here to Austin every single day. So I took a job at a very large company, Dell, and had a variety of different positions in marketing and merchandising over 10 years. And that culminated with one of the most interesting and biggest roles that, it, that I've had, and that is that I ran Dell's two and a half billion dollar e-commerce business for consumer North America. That was pretty fun to be able to build up an entire global organization you know, that was focused on e-commerce. From that, you know, I wound up trying a variety of different things, including a startup that was focused on technology inside of retail stores. And then I also wound up running a billion dollar division for Groupon. Had an amazing time working for, for Groupon, continue to expand into more e-commerce categories with, with that role. Then after that, you know, wound up working for a large company called Ziff Davis, which owns hundreds of publications. And I went up running a big marketing and, and merchandising division for them. Now, the irony there is that we used Jungle Scout. That's how we figured out what was selling on Amazon. It was really important for us to see what was trending in the e-commerce space from a product by product perspective so we could know what to put into marketing materials. So we used Jungle Scout on a daily basis. And when I received a phone call, well, that was in 2019 when I received that phone call, saying that Jungle Scout was relocating its headquarters to Austin they said, have you heard of Jungle Scout? And I laughed. I said, I'm using it right now. I actually have been using Jungle Scout since 2016. I love selling things on Amazon. I had actually started as a personal hobby and had learned you know, a ton of interesting things about what to sell on Amazon and what not to sell on Amazon You know, over that uh, three year period before I joined Jungle Scout. 
The funny thing was, is I have several different uh, side businesses. Jungle Scout actually encourages people to have interests outside of the company because it makes our understanding of the e-commerce marketplace stronger. And one of the things that I learned, the very first product that I sold in 2016 were coffee shop supplies. I have an interest in coffee, I love coffee, and I also own a coffee shop, just in full disclosure. One of the things that I was able to do is say, okay, I've got a whole bunch of inventory, just like this gingerbread syrup, you know, which is used to make pumpkin spice lattes. And I thought, wow, I have cases and cases of this. I'm gonna sell this on Amazon. Don't do this. Listen to Jungle Scout. Jungle Scout will tell you what not to sell on Amazon. And this is a perfect example. It is heavy, it is cheap, and when it breaks, it will spill sticky sugar everywhere, which is exactly the last thing that you wanna be doing on Amazon. Clearly, I was not taking the direction of Jungle Scout at that point. And, you know, once I started out selling, you know, coffee shop supplies, I realized I needed to, to access the experts, which of course introduced me to Jungle Scout and the Jungle Scout YouTube channel in particular. Things have progressed, you know, quite a lot since then. I have sold many things on Amazon over the years, including a second category of products that I went into, which was cufflinks and formal wear. And so I learned my lesson on the first product, which was don't sell anything that's heavy and cheap. And so instead I started selling something that was light and expensive. Well, I thought it was the perfect business, you know, until COVID came along and then all of a sudden no one had a prom, no one had a wedding, <laughs> no one had any reason to dress in anything pretty much other than their pajamas on a daily basis. And so the cufflink business, basically sales went to zero. So I shut that down. After working from home with COVID, I had my two Labradors with me every day, all day long, and was able to have them as my, my friends that were with me on all of my Zoom calls. And so my labs were always in the background and I thought, well, pet products really took off you know, during the pandemic. So Jungle Scout has a tool called Jungle Scout Cobalt, and we use that to track the trends of different categories, you know, on Amazon and, and frankly, beyond Amazon. I was able to see very, very clearly, you know, through Jungle Scout Cobalt that the pet category was taking off. So I did what any entrepreneurial hobbyist would do. I tried to figure out how to make dog collars, you know, one of the, uh, the most interesting products. Now, there's an old phrase that you have to build a better mousetrap, you know, in order to get ahead and uh, the, the mice will come running to your door. Well, I wanted to build a better dog collar. And so in addition to the Jungle Scout trends, I looked at all the bad reviews that pet products had received from customers. And I tried to figure out what are the things that people don't like about all of the best selling products. And I made improvements. I worked with a supplier that I found through Jungle Scout Supplier Database in order to optimize new features on a set of dog collars. And so just as an example, you know, these are my tactical dog collars. This is the Hunter Orange one, which is very popular. What you'll notice here is that I put on an industrial military buckle, which my supplier was able to do for me. I've got a tag here for the dog tags themselves, and then a tag in the back for the dog leash. And so you don't have to yank the collar sideways whenever a dog is on a leash. Then on top of that, I put in a handle. And so if you want to, you can have a little handle here, you know, to hold on to if your dog actually pulls a lot. And when it's not in use, then you can go ahead and use the Velcro strip and press that down. Then on top of that, since a lot of dogs do pull, we added padding. And so there's neoprene padding, you know, on the interior, so it doesn't hurt your dog when it's being pulled. And then, you know, last but not least, in addition to the military nylon that we have, you know, on the collar, which is super strong, there's also reflective stitching, you know, that goes all the way through. And so if you're walking your dog at night, you know, people can actually see your dog, you know, with the stitching that lights up. Now, this was a blast to design. I really loved doing it. It was uh, a back and forth process with my supplier, but it was tons of fun. And we started out with, you know, an orange one like this, along with a green one and a black one, you know, that really went along the camo and uh, Hunter Fisher type 
mode for dogs. And since then, we've had tons of interest and in expanded colors. We've now got blue, we've now got pink, we've got orange. There's actually a total of six colors that we are currently shipping, which is really, really fun. Dog collar business is doing great, you know, but it's just another way for me to have fun, you know, on the side. I say that some people play golf, I play e-commerce. You know, some people are, you know, going to the park on the weekends, I do that, but then I also come back and uh, sell some dog collars. So it's just my hobby. So the way that I did it was I actually went out to four or five different suppliers and based on the research that I'd done to determine what people liked and didn't like about other dog collars, I had a list and everything that I mentioned as far as features on you know, my collars, I put them all in at the beginning and said, this is what the collar needs to be how it needs to fit, how strong it needs to be. These are the extra rings and features that need to occur there. Each supplier had a very different way of coming to a recommendation. Most suppliers, will, they will build you a sample and ship it to you for roughly 35 to $40, you know, in my category. And so, you know, put aside, you know, $200 said, all right, I'm gonna get, you know, five different samples, you know, shipped over to me. And everyone was different. Like there was not a, a, a universal identicality across all of them. Each supplier had a, a different tactic. And one in particular came back and said, okay, all the features are really interesting, but what you really need to do is you need to make sure that you've got a great logo on this. And so uh, that supplier came back with this uh, this rubber embossed uh, logo, which I really liked for the company, which is called Bontog, which stands for bonded together, which is the bonds that you have with your pets. And so in the end, wound up choosing the supplier that, uh, that looked the best, which was this one right here. One of the best things about selling on Amazon is if you have a passion or an interest for a particular product or a particular category, you can find products to sell that'll fit into that category. You need to use a tool that shows you how a category sales are going, how that category sales are trending, and then also how expensive it's going to be to advertise you know, within that given category. You must do that in order to be a successful seller. I would say that you can add icing on the cake by having passion about a particular product like I have with my pets products, since they mean so much to me. But without that foundation of data, you will not have a successful business. And so I would strongly encourage everyone to get as much data as possible before making some big investment decisions. I'm not really unique in this scenario, to be really honest. I think a lot of people do exactly what I'm doing, which is, you know, you have a career, you have a normal job. You don't have to, you know, believe the hype of all of the, you know, some of the crazy YouTube videos about, you know, quitting your job quickly and, and doing things like that. It is truly possible to have a business that frankly is growing and profitable, you know, while also keeping your main job. And so I do find that after dinner at nights, that's when I actually work on my e-commerce business because it is a project. Now, would I like for it to grow into something enormous? Of course, I mean, who wouldn't? And so you have to go into it understanding how much time you really have to be able to spend on a side business or you know, an Amazon business or a Walmart business or whatever it happens to be. And just be honest with yourself. Most people can't say that what they do on the weekends as a hobby can actually turn into a six or seven figure business. I can within a very short period of time through some of the things that I've learned on Jungle Scout and frankly, you know, being in this role, how to build a business from scratch and really do it right. And the Jungle Scout tools are instrumental in helping me, especially the advertising analytics tool, you know, that talks about organic versus versus ad sales. When you think about it, how to spend your spare time, I would actually encourage people to spend their time in e-commerce. If there's something that you're passionate about that actually is rooted in data, then you actually can build up a business. And if you would have asked me a year and a half ago, if I would have turned you know, a whole bunch of, of, of dog collars into a six figure business, I would have laughed. But that's exactly what's happened at this point and it's profitable as well. And so you don't have to be someone who's saying, hey, I'm gonna quit my job and take on the world. You just have to be somebody who's interested in actually putting in a little bit of time in your spare time in order to build up a business that you really know and you love. 
I think that entrepreneurship comes in many forms. You can be entrepreneurial inside of a company where you work, and you can also be entrepreneurial on the side, outside of a company where you work, where you're doing something on your own. I think that those two things play wonderfully together because when you're being entrepreneurial in your work and you're thinking about new ways of doing things and new processes, then that's helping the company that you work for. If you're thinking about something entrepreneurial on the side, that's your side business, it also puts you into a business mindset that I firmly believe helps your primary career and your primary goals. So I don't see entrepreneurship, you know, either at a company or, you know, as a side hustle as being conflicting. I actually see them as complementary. There are things that I learn in a side hustle related to selling on Amazon and advertising on Amazon and listing things on Walmart that directly affect my effectiveness as the chief marketing officer at Jungle Scout. When I've had different positions over the years, there have always been things that I paid attention to on my time off, either through reading or through lessons or through additional courses, et cetera, that constantly allowed me to continue to grow and to frankly get better at my career. So I think the big question is, is it really just entrepreneurship that helps you throughout your career? Or is it entrepreneurship and learning and keeping an open mind about new ways of doing things and not being afraid to realize when something's not working anymore and pivoting to go make it work? Because all of those things I think can play into being better at your job and it can certainly help you in your career as you move forward. So the net of that is it's really not about just a side hustle or about doing something as a one-off. It's about having a lifetime of willing to push the limits and to be able to say there's more out there that I don't know and I want to find out. Once you reach that point in your life where you realize that the sky is truly the limit, as long as you keep learning and you keep growing and you keep building things, then that will help you throughout your entire career. For me personally, I found selling on Amazon to be one of those things that is super enlightening for me and I love it and it makes me be better at e-commerce. And you know, at the end of the day, that's my career and so that's why it's super important for me. Oh my gosh. Wow, we're gonna go deep like real fast, aren't we? You know, did you enjoy, did you love your parents? Did your parents love you? <laughs> oh, thanks Mike, I appreciate it. Never that. have a one-on-one -on -one with Alyssa again. The next thing you know, you're doing stuff on film. <laughs>